On July 24th, AMD officially delayed the Ryzen 9000 series out of an abundance of caution due to initial production units not meeting their full quality expectations. And this has led to much speculation, with some people wondering if AMD found a flaw that could lead to even more delays, and others speculating that it was a simple typo that caused AMD to pull back millions of processors. Well, I'm here to tell you that it was not because of a typo that AMD delayed Zen 5 desktop, and frankly, the typo theory doesn't really make sense because they are staggering the launch after delaying Ryzen 9000. I'm not saying there never was a typo on some early sample out there, although one of my contacts at AMD told me that they do think that that was fake, but if it was due to a typo, why stagger the launch? Why launch the low-end processors first on the 8th of August and the top-end processors later on the 15th? Well, I will tell you why. One of my best AMD sources reached out to me today and confirmed what is going on. If I put this quote on screen, the person told me that the issue has to do with higher binned Zen 5 parts. After recently updating their testing methodology, a handful of parts failed to meet validation and thus AMD decided to do some retesting of existing yields just to be safe. They suspect that some very early yields didn't quite hit the average quality that they expected out of TSMC for an animator. Not that they think that there's really an issue with TSMC for an animator overall, just that something may have happened with the very first batch as they ramped production, but that they just want to be sure of that before they commit to how they will continue to bend yields moving forward. What this means is that they may need to bend some 9950Xs into 9900Xs and 9700Xs into 9600Xs. Or, you know, perhaps they'll send some of those top yields aside and save those for like 9950s or 9900 non-Xs. But the point is that there is no flaw here. It's just an early yield issue. And well, that is why the 9950X is launching later, by the way, that will need more validation that is more likely to maybe fail with some of these early yields because it's the highest bin and thus most likely to need downgrading. And so there you go. AMD's new validation suite all of a sudden caught a few failures, at least at the stock configurations they were going to ship out at and out of an abundance of caution and seriously this person kept telling me abundance of caution because they think that there's a chance when they go and retest a lot of the early yields they're not going to find any notable failures whatsoever but they just want to make extra sure because well if they were to have failures they would probably fail in a similar way to how intel's instability product uh, problems are going down and so they don't want to be compared to intel at all and again this entirely debunks the typo idea as it would not be a staggered launch with the high-end launching last if it was due to a simple typo they would still probably want to just launch them all on the same day or if anything launch the top end models first and well the one question you might still have is well if amd was going to change validation methodology why wouldn't they push back the launch a little bit from the get-go just to make sure their new testing methodology doesn't have any problems pop up and i reached out to somebody who is a validation engineer at amd someone who didn't work on zen 5 but someone who gets the process and this person told me that well, they didn't work at Zen 5, what they could tell me is that it's not uncommon for validation methodology to change from week to week, that they are always adding new optimizations, test points, etc. And it's not at all unheard of to discover new issues as you ramp production. So yeah, I mean, I'm directly told methodology changes week to week quite often. And so there would have been no way to know this could have caught something while they ramped production. And so they just unexpectedly saw a few things not meet the standards they wanted and said, we cannot be compared to Intel, and we cannot risk that maybe even 5% of the early yields have issues. Let's retest. If we need to downbend some products, we will. And so that's what's going on with AMD. But anyways, I also now have some new updates on how Intel is handling their instability issues. And I want to talk about that and how they're treating their partners behind the scenes right now. But first, in ad from Micro Center. It is Build Your Own Month at Micro Center this August, and it is therefore the best time to build a custom PC with their expert associates for the lowest prices. Right now, if you go in, you can customize a PC build and pick it up on the same day, but then, you know, they also have tons of great monthly deals that you should check out, and you should also check out their new location in Miami, where if you just sign up to see it, early you can get a 128 gigabyte usb flash drive for free and also they have a deal right now going on you can get the creelty ender 3 v2 3d printer for just 99 dollars so yeah i want to thank micro center for sponsoring this channel clicking on the links helps the channel a ton even if you don't buy something although if you do through those links it helps even more check out micro center and support more as said by doing so today all right so i am not going to put any 
leak quotes on screen today when I talk about what I'm hearing from Intel. And I'm just going to preface all this by saying that I know it's been less than a week since I have put out updates about what's going on with Intel's instability issues, but because this is blowing up so much and because Intel's partners and even employees at Intel are so frustrated by what's going on that I've had an outpouring of new sources that have been getting on the phone with me over the past few days. And so I'm already ready to tell you guys a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes. So first of all, what I would say is that the people at Intel you can kind of organize them into two camps. There's the people that for some odd reason don't seem to think that this is a real issue. They frankly to me appear to come off as just from the old era. Like we're Intel, we're big, we're invincible. It doesn't matter what you say or what happens. We're too big to fail and we're just going to shrug this off. And th those types of people at Intel are really frustrating the partners they are working with. Now then there's another camp within Intel that seems to really realize they may be in huge trouble. And because they realize that this could be a, well, a company destroying problem, they are stonewalling their partners and refusing to admit, well, just about anything is wrong outside of what they've already said publicly. Like these are the people that say things like, no, uh, we don't have any laptop failures, not even with our i9HX chips. And then, you know, like, for example, I talked to an OEM who would then say to this Intel rep, uh, this is the same silicon as what's on desktop. Why wouldn't this fail? And they just repeat the line. We are not seeing any failures in laptop chips, even HX. Even if you ask again, they'll just repeat the line. And it's because they know they don't really have a good answer and they're scared to admit anything that could cause the bleeding to start gushing. And speaking from going from bleeding to gushing, from what I can gather from OEMs, they still have no idea what percentage of these chips are actually expected to be failures. That Intel will not give them any numbers whatsoever. And most people suspect it's because Intel still doesn't really know that they know that this microcode update they're working on could help the issue, but they're not really sure if it will firmly solve it or if it will make it so that instead of CPUs breaking in like a month from now, it just happens six months from now. And they're not even really sure if they'll be able to roll it out in an effective way. I've actually heard misleading things behind the scenes. I, I shouldn't go into too much detail, but I do not get the sense that everyone at Intel believes the same things. That some of them think the microcode update will be more effective or more easily installed into BIOSes and maybe into newly produced CPUs. And then there's others that think that this is never really going to be rolled out in a way that saves most of the CPUs. Anyways, and so overall there's still just this sense of we're not sure if we know the whole problem or if we can even solve it. And finally, one thing that I also want to confirm at the end of this video is that I am now 100% sure that oxidation is not the major issue for at least why Raptor Lake desktop chips are failing. It's just an issue that damaged some Sapphire Rapids and Raptor Lake chips last year. For those who missed my leak from the end of last week, I put out a specific date range from there was a oxidation issue at the Arizona Chandler plant with Intel. And I have now been told by multiple people that is exactly what happened, exactly how you described it. And it did also damage Sapphire Rapids, but it's not really a problem that's ongoing. It's been solved. And so it's not really something that will materially hurt Intel directly moving forward because it's, it's solved, right? But notice why I said materially, okay? The thing that's going to cost Intel a ton of money uh, just in an obvious material way is the fact that they're going to have to replace so many Raptor Lake CPUs. So the fact that the oxidation issue damaged some Sapphire Rapids and Raptor Lake last year, yeah, it'll cost them some money, but it's not an ongoing issue that they couldn't afford to replace. If it was just that, they easily could replace those RMAs. Not a problem. No, it's not a material one. It's a legal problem. The problem with the oxidation issue is that it seems pretty obvious that Intel lied by omission to their partners. And you get the sense behind the scenes that Intel is happy to admit it happened, like they have publicly, because it kind of makes them have this veneer of honesty. But they don't want to say more than that or dwell on it because they realize that it could be argued that they just straight up lied to their partners about a manufacturing issue that they were obliged to tell them. And they're super scared they're going to be sued for that. And, well, it doesn't really matter, though, in my opinion. You can already see that the lawsuits are coming. And I think they could get pretty bad on 
this one. All right, so that is going to do it for this video. It wasn't a super long one, but I thought I had some really interesting information to share with you all to put to rest what's going on with the AMD Ryzen 9000 delays, and also, of course, to give you an update on what I am sure about even more so when it comes to Intel Raptor-like instability failures. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure that you like it, share it, comment down below from the algorithm, and then also make sure that you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring that bell button, and of course, that you support us on Patreon. Uh, Patreon is the best way to show support for Moore's Laws, Jed. Just at $2, the entry tier, you get access to the Discord, you get access to ask guest questions, um, you get access to hundreds of episodes of Die Shrink that have no ads in them ever, and then higher tiers get even more content. We cannot do this without our patrons, so please do that if you have the extra money every month. But no matter what, though, if you made it this far into the video, at a minimum, thank you for watching. <laughs>